in owning your doubts, you don't disqualify your faith. I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Now, there's a couple miracles in this passage. One is that the boy gets healed of his condition, and two is that the man asks for help. How many women know that for a man to ask for help is a miracle in itself? Now, not me. I ask Holly for help all the time. I, I particularly, this is one of the things in our marriage, I told you that she helps me a lot. I am horrible about losing things and then freaking out and thinking it's gone forever. And Holly's more calm. So every morning we start our day with me losing my AirPods. Every morning. I know this is some real first world problems I'm telling you about up here, but every morning this is the first thing we do. I don't seek the Lord. I look for my AirPods because I have sleep issues, so I always put something really boring in my AirPod to fall asleep to, and I spend the first 10 minutes of the day looking for the AirPod. And then after five minutes of looking for it, I ask you, I ask you, Holly, to help me and ask her to help me, and she does. She's been doing this our whole marriage because my first instinct is it's gone. It's gone. It'll never be back again, whether it's sunglasses, AirPods, my anointing. I told you, my first instinct is it's gone. It's gone. I don't feel God's presence right now. I guess it's gone. I've been looking for my AirPods for 30 seconds. They're not here. They're gone. And she says, Do you think they got up and walked away? You put them in your ear seven hours ago. They are here somewhere. This is what she taught me. You don't know how to look. Y'all shut up. She said, you don't know how to look. I said, I looked. She said, you looked with your eyes. To really look, you can't just use your eyes. She said, this was several years ago. She said, I'm going to teach you how to look. She started picking stuff up. She said, See what I'm doing? I'm lifting while I'm looking. Woo! I'm lifting while I'm looking. See, I'm looking underneath stuff. I'm moving the pillow. I'm peeling back the covers. And God said, Some of y'all look, but you don't lift. You don't know how to look. So, in the past six months, you said stuff like this I've lost my faith. You didn't lose it. You just don't know how to look. Why were y'all shouting so much when I was talking about me and Holly? Mm. When I talk to people, I notice the way we phrase things. We say, I lost my joy. I lost my peace. How many of y'all have said in the last 30 days, I feel like I'm losing my mind? How many of y'all didn't even get that specific? Just, I feel like I'm losing it. You didn't lose it. You just have to learn how to look. And sometimes looking means lifting stuff, looking under stuff, not just walking in. It's gone. Well, I woke up in a good mood, but y'all just… devil just stole my joy. I guess he did. You left it lying right out for him to take. You didn't lock the door, roll up the window. Now I'm preaching to me. Because I'll say I lost it, but I haven't really even looked. I haven't even really looked. The man said, I do believe. That's why I brought my boy to you. I still have faith. But will you help me with my unbelief? Now, what I want to teach you today, there's a difference between having unbelief and being an unbeliever. He did not say, I'm an unbeliever. He said, I have unbelief. 
And when you have doubts about anything in your life, what God spoke to you, or even who God is, sometimes uh, many of us doubt the existence of God. That doesn't make you an unbeliever. There's a difference between having unbelief. Immediately, he exclaimed. Did you see that word? Immediately, he exclaimed. Immediately, he exclaimed. I do believe, but help my unbelief. And we understand that although his explanation was immediate, his unbelief probably came over time because his boy has been in this condition since childhood. And perhaps at the first sign or symptom that his boy had something wrong with him, he believed. But life has a way of layering unbelief. And beneath the layers of unbelief is still a you that trusts God. And we try to bring you into church sometimes and remove all of the doubts from the equation. We do that sometimes through preaching cliches or by making vague promises that you're going to make it to the other side and things like that. And I preach those things too, and sometimes they have value. But sometimes I think we, we think that God is going to decrease our doubts. The Father in this passage prayed that Jesus would increase his faith. Help me overcome my unbelief. And he's shifted now. When he first started talking to Jesus, your disciples couldn't do it. The first instinct was to blame. But now he's understanding that it's not going to get me anywhere to blame Jesus' staff. If I want my boy healed, I'm going to have to get beneath all the surface reasons that it didn't work. And I'm going to have to own this for myself. Help my unbelief. Would you have the guts to pray that out loud? Help my unbelief. Now, we pray, help my bank account. We pray, help my husband act right. We pray all kinds of things, but when you say, help my unbelief, power happens. That's the connection right there. Help my unbelief. And there are some things that we need to unbelieve before we can believe what we need to believe. Unbelief creeps in. It doesn't come in all at once. You don't wake up one day and talk about, like, I just don't believe anymore. As years go by, as, as disappointments accumulate, here's one way of saying it. Faith doesn't disappear. It deteriorates. Just it wears away. I, I wrote a book in uh, 2010 in my journey of faith called Sun Stand Still. Two people read that book, my mom and Israel. That's, that's all I heard. But it's a good book. It was about believing God for the impossible. I watched my dad die of ALS a couple years later, and I had to go back and revisit, do I still believe that God can do the impossible? My friend Levi Lusco prayed, son stand still over his five-year-old daughter, and she died in his arms of an asthma attack as he tried to resuscitate her. And I have to go back in my life now and separate out the events that happened that caused me to doubt from the faith that I have to realize that sometimes we didn't really lose our faith. We misplaced it. Is this too deep, babe? We misplaced it. It didn't get up and walk away. You didn't lose your faith. You misplaced it. In the Father's case, he said, your disciples couldn't drive it out. Your disciples couldn't do it. The disciples weren't the ones that you needed to believe in to begin with. Many of us lost our faith in Jesus because we put our trust in people. So we lose our faith in God because somebody else let us down? Because the disciples couldn't do it? You're going to walk away from what God has for you? I don't go to church anymore. I got burned. Have you ever had a bad meal? Do you still eat? Help my unbelief. I've watched my son like this so long. You know, when it's been so long like this, it just adds up over time to where his first instinct is, I, I do believe, but 
will you help me overcome the part of me that doesn't? I'll never forget when I was in Orangeburg, South Carolina preaching on a Friday night, and I preached a sermon back in the day on Jonathan from 1 Samuel 14, Old Testament character. He's the son of Saul the king. And I preached that thing for 1 Samuel 14, 6 so many times. I mean, I've preached it so many times. And I used to talk about how Jonathan said, uh, perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving. And I talked about how that sounds kind of like he's, uh, he hadn't quite made up his mind. Nothing can hinder the Lord. Perhaps God will act. And I called it the perhaps paradox. Now, this was a little small church. And I don't know, was I 19 years old that this guy drove me back to uh, the host home where we were staying? And the guy's name was Rodney that was driving me. And on the way home, uh, you know, I'm insecure. So I said, How'd you like the sermon, Rodney? Well, I shouldn't ask that. He said, uh, he said, I don't know if I'd call that a sermon, what you did up there. I'm not making this up. He said, There's no perhaps about it. If God said he'll do it, he'll do it. That stuff you're preaching up there isn't faith, it's doubt. I said, But I got it from the Bible, Rodney. I read the Bible. That's what Jonathan said in the Bible. I was preaching the Bible verse. He said, No, no, no. If God said he'll do it, he'll do it. And there's no if about it. Hold on. Huh? If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. And Jesus did it, even though the man said if. So I start arguing with Rodney. I said, Rodney, there's a lot of people in the Bible, and I'm putting a substitute name in there. His real name wasn't Rodney. I still remember what it was. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to get sued or canceled. The man said, The man said, well, real faith in the Bible. I said, Moses had doubts. He said God couldn't use him. God got so mad at Moses that the Bible said his anger burned against him, but he still used him, even though he had to give him Aaron to speak for him. You got more faith than Moses? I said, Abraham lied about his wife. I went through a whole list of people who doubted, but God still used them. I said, You got more faith than all of them? He said, Well, I guess when it comes to that, I do. By the time we got to where he was dropping me off in the driveway, we were about, we were about to fist fight in, in the driveway. And the man whose home it was, he came running out the house. He said, What in the world's going on? And he kind of broke us up and he took us in the house. And Rodney left and spun out the driveway, pickup truck. And I sat down the house. And I said, man, we were arguing about… He said, if you have any doubt, you don't have real faith. And this is what the man said to me. He said, if you teach that and preach that, you're going to be broke, poor, and sick all your life, and so will all the people that you lead and your future children, if you have any. And I'm like, hey, man, <laughs> leave my hypothetical future children out of this. Make fun of me if you want. But he really thought that. He really thought that. He really thought that the proof of faith is the absence of doubt. He had no room in his view of who God is for an if. But Jesus did what the man needed, even though the man wasn't perfectly convinced he could do it. Because the man invited Jesus into the place where he had the greatest doubt and the greatest pain. And now I think. This might be my favorite prayer in the Bible, because I can get with this. I can get with this when I'm in a bad mood. I can get with this when I'm in a good mood. I can get with this when I'm riding high. I can get with this when, 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 when the news is bad. I can get with this any, any day of the week. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I'm not asking God to just take it away. I'm asking God, help me overcome it. Help me. My, my faith is not gone. I just have to learn where to look. And sometimes the greatest faith, I need you to get this, is right underneath that biggest doubt. Sometimes the greatest thing that God wants to show you, if you will start lifting and looking and lifting and looking. You see what I'm saying? Because we can't just cover over it. We can't just come to church for a fresh coat of paint over our problems. We can't just come to church for a three-hour scriptural sugar boost 
to get us feeling good for a moment. It won't work, and we'll end up like the disciples saying, why did I shout and sing and listen and take notes in church? Because you didn't invite Jesus into the real place of your pain. You didn't lose your faith. You just stopped looking at the surface. It's gone. It's gone. One boy broke up with you. I guess I'll never be loved. You're 14 years old. I guess it's gone. I guess every, you can't trust anybody. See how we do it? It's gone. You have to know where to look. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.